So we're creating, it's just sort of going to be a generic family as a starting point. Okay, and I'll take these out. I remembered how to get those. We'll show you that in a second. Okay, so we're looking at a generic family. We're looking at it from the top. And we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to model it on the floor, even though we're ultimately going to rotate it up. I'm just going to model it on the floor and we'll go ahead and kind of tilt it up when we actually go ahead and place it. But what we're going to do is start by just drawing some lines to kind of represent these different things. And this point right at the center, that's the origin. That's going to be sort of like the placement point. I might suggest that we do that as the, like the peak of the umbrella and we sort of work down from that. Okay. So it doesn't really matter too much, but we'll start by just saying, okay, let's give ourselves some, uh, we'll do it all with reference lines first and then we'll start making real elements out of it in a little while. So I'll go through and I'll put just a, a nice reference line coming down. That'll represent kind of the, uh, oh, this long bar that's coming down. Okay. Then just kind of drawing some of the other pieces to it, we know that we're going to have, oh, some other reference line, which is going to be, it's going to be the length of R, or what we call R. It's the, uh, the length of that pinch. Okay. So you have two reference lines? Yeah, there's right on top of each other right now. In fact, yeah, I could even get rid of the other one for right now. We don't really need it at this point. I mean, I'll just pull it over here for right now. We'll put it back just so it's going to be clearer later. Actually, right on top of each other. Well, how kind of you to lock on it. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, let's just do it separate. Okay. And actually, what I should do is let me even lock it to the origin. That's kind of a good thing. And lock it to that line. That way, it'll, it'll, it won't slip, slide around on us by accident. Okay. Um, coming out of this, we're going to have a couple of other lines. Let's go through and we're going to have a line, a reference line, excuse me, over here, which is going to go kind of up like this at some angle. And we'll fix this all up in just a second. I'm going to have another line, which is going to come down at the other angle. So it's going to come down from up here and do that. Okay, and that's the basic essential fold. If we can get that working right, everything else about this little uh, parallelogon and kind of the, the inverse kind of fold, that'll all kind of be okay. But this is going to be the hard one to kind of get right. But fortunately, through geometry itself, that's a reference plane. Let's go back and we'll do the reference line again. Actually, yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm going to see if I can get this actually to lock to the midpoint or not. Because usually you can. If not, I might make, might make this as two separate lines. Actually, I did. There it is. There's the midpoint. Yay. That's good. <laughs> we like that. Okay. So that's the basic shape we're trying to construct. So let's think about how to put all the different lengths on here. We're going to go ahead and choose that rod. And here's the trick to kind of making it all happen. There it is. There's that length there, although it's showing us that one instead. Interesting. Mm. What I want to do is be able to choose these. Now you have to do it when they're in connected. Okay, that'll give me the length there. I'm just basically trying to expose the dimensions. And it looks like when they're connected, it doesn't like to expose them too much. That don't have to be three, right? Yeah, oh, we'll go ahead and change it in just a second to make it all match. Even this piece over here, I just want to expose the dimension. It looks like it's not going to do that for me right offhand, so let me separate it, and I'll put it back in there. Okay, so anyway, now we have some dimensions to work with, so we can start constructing the geometry. Although what we're going to do is uh, just kind of give these systems some different parameter names so we can kind of figure this out. So, for example, that guy over here, we're going to call that R, so I'll add a parameter to it. I decided to call that R. Okay. And we'll let that be an instance parameter so that you can go ahead and change it kind of free freely. Okay. Um, L, this will be L right there. And that'll actually be sort of like 2L over there, something like that. So for this thing, we'll go ahead and call it L. And we'll give it some value in there. Maybe it can't be changed very easily. And this thing over here, it's going to be, there you go. We'll call it 2L, but 
what we're going to do is actually give it a formula in just a second to kind of make it actually that be true. So let's kind of figure this out. So this guy over here, I'll just go ahead and pull it on down and join it up to the bottom of R. And this guy over here, we'll go ahead and pull over and see if we can fit those in the midpoint. Okay, so now we at least sort of have them connected together. And it's funny, it actually may be pretty close, although no, 2L is not really 2L right now, it's just, uh, well, maybe it is. Oh. Yeah, but that's actually the midpoint, okay. So it may be even sort of internally resolving it, but you know, we want this to be able to flex and kind of keep on resolving it in terms of what's going on. So, well that's kind of, you know, there's, there's really sort of a very interesting issue here, and I'm not even sure yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if you could sort of change that value and the geometry would actually do what it was supposed to? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably asking too much of it. But let's go ahead and sort of play with it and sort of get a sense of what's going on. So, because I'm thinking we have to do this mathematically, but it might be easy. Let's just try this. Let's say, let's say it's one foot two instead. It looks like... Oh, no, what's happening is that's slipped on the midpoint. I think that's moved on down. If that's now one foot uh, zero, yeah, it's slipping. So that part's moving nicely. These things aren't sort of angling properly in terms of what's going on. So even though we attached it to the midpoint, it's not really using that as a true hinge point and kind of forcing the geometry. That's okay. Let's go on back and we'll start putting this back in there. Okay, so we got these different lengths. That part's pretty good. Let's go ahead and save because uh, you know, it's starting to get good already. We don't want to lose it. Uh, Accidentally, this is going to be my umbrella. Oh, it's like a fin or armature, whatever it is. Okay, now let's think about what we want to have happen. So, as we go through and we change R around, you're telling me that the angle is going to be so the cosine. So if, we, if, if we want to leave the x alone, then yeah, we if we want to solve for x yeah. relative then to R and L. To, uh, so this will be divided into cosine. So if the cosine of x is that, then is it is it the arc cosine or what is it? That's what's the inversion? I, guess I sound so dumb, but it's like yeah, it's been a while since I've done all this math. Yeah, so to do the x alone, you have to do the arc cosine. Yeah, arc cosine. It's the that's the inversion, right? The inversion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen here, even in terms of L and 2 over L, let's go ahead and actually put a formula in there. We haven't actually done that yet. We just have these lengths. 2L is just going to be 2 times L. Okay. So hopefully, no matter what happens to L, 2L will always kind of stay the same. Okay, and part. it remembers like, the letters you input in the formulas. The... Yeah. It actually it, it uses those names. It's, you know, they have to all be unique and casing is important and spacing is important. It's pretty forgiving, but it's kind of like working with the Excel formula language. Something like that. So we want to go through and now put an angle in here. And it's really going to be, it's interesting. The way this thing works, the angle at the bottom and the angle on the top are always the same. Mm -hmm. and it's always uh, even with each other. So what we're going to do is let's put in an angle. And, oh, I have to do annotate, and we'll do a little uh, angular dimension. So from here to here, okay, as well as from here to here. Those should be the same. Well, they will be when we get done with them. <laughs> okay, and we'll say that this thing over here is going to be, and we'll give it, add a parameter. What do we want to call this? This is almost like a fold angle. It's really, it's good, that same angle is going to keep on getting uh, mirrored all over the place. Okay, and we'll say, again, we'll make that a type parameter because it's really going to be determined. It's not going to be uh, something the user is going to put in. Okay, and now, even here, let me go ahead and I can say make you also the fold angle. That's okay. Oh, what's going to do here is, it's because it knows it's the midpoint there. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, length there, length there. That should be okay. I'm going to do that. I'm trying to make it not over-constrained. There we go. Okay. Now, 
if we get this all right, <laughs> you know, you know, those things will all join themselves back up again in terms of what's going on. Okay, so mathematicians in the crowd, fold angle is defined as, and you think it's the arc cosine? Yeah, arc cosine. Let's see if arc cosine's in here. If not, I'll go looking for it in a second. Of, and it's r divided by 2. And then it's actually going to be times L, isn't it? Or, or divided by L? The whole thing L. R over 2. Well, actually, R over 2 over L, that's only just L over L, isn't it? No. Now, R over 2, no, never mind. I'm thinking too broadly. Yeah, over L. Or it's, it's actually R over 2L, I believe. Yeah. Or you could just do 1 over. That's still X. Okay, math, don't fail us now. Let's see how this is looking. Uh, parameters are case sensitive. The following arc coast. Okay, doesn't understand arc coast. That's okay in terms of what's going on. Let's go out and take a look and see what we can do. We have also two end fronts. Well, that's, that we're not going to like either. Actually, one's closing the 2 over L, oh. one's closing the arcs, that cosine there. Let's see if we can find uh, in here. Let's go searching. Let's see if we can find cosine in there. Sine, co ooh, arc sine, a cos. Okay, I think it's gonna be that. I'm trying to figure out where that what that actually is. Okay, so like 50 degrees or something like that. Let's see how this actually works. Instance parameter object and type parameter for formulas. Oh, okay. What's good, what that's saying is that basically okay, I've kind of goofed it in terms of the uh, because the instance since L is going to keep changing, yeah, uh, fold angle has to kind of keep on being. It has to be an instance parameter also because it's going to change based on the value of an instance parameter. So what what that means is back over here on the modify. As opposed to being a type parameter, it has to have the same flexibility because it's going to change based on how R is going to change. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so let's see how it did. Okay, looks like it's actually constructing something that looks pretty reasonable. Let's come back here over here again. Let's try something different. So what if R is like one foot instead? Looks like it's folding out pretty good. What if it's like zero foot six? I think we're doing pretty good on our math in terms of what's going on. It seems to be folding nicely in terms of what's going on. Excellent. Okay. So that I think was the hardest piece of it. Now we got to go through and just basically put the other rods in doing the same sort of thing. Or so we we have this double rod thing in here. And that's how it does the hinge, and we'll figure out how it reflects around all those things. Let's see if we can sort of describe that. I think we actually got the hardest part done. Yay. Okay. Then now, once we have these lines, uh, kind of like what we did um, in your drawing, we can you know extrude either a, a, a round rod or sweep a round rod, or we can sweep a square rod. Whatever it is, it's going to be the uh, the little uh, the, the structural element that'll follow that line. So we'll take it from just a you know. 2D line into a 3D element. Okay, so if that's that, let's go ahead and save this. Let's kind of draw the rest of the geometry and kind of think about how this works. I'm going to blow it up to a much larger scale just so those dimensions don't look so obnoxious relative to the uh, the drawing. We can see a little bit better. Okay, so help me with these other lines. What's going to happen? We're going to put this other line in. There's something that does. It kind of starts here. And it's going to kind of reflect up a little bit. Okay. Then there's this other little piece of it, though, that kind of comes on down. And then there's some sort of little hinging piece. So let's think about how we can do this. Because really, there's this whole funny thing about there's some hinging piece that's a certain distance off over here. And then this thing always has to stay parallel. Oops, that's a reference plane. Move back to a reference line. OK. 
Okay, and then somehow this thing over here extends back and catches that. It's something like that. Is that kind of about it? Okay, so let's think about how to drive these other lines and make them do the right things. For example, this one to this one, you know, we can go ahead and it's connected there. That should be good. Let's try a little flexing. I'm trying to see, I want to see how much is connected and how much we're going to have to lock down using some dimensions or some points to deal with that. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just make it back up to one foot. Okay, let's see what didn't happen. I think since they're connecting at the ends, they might not. It's, it's a little unhappy. Yeah. No worries. We'll get that figured out. What do we know about these things? Cancel that. We do know, for example, that this one over here, it has to have the same length. We know that's also L, right? So if we come back over here and we choose that, we know that has to be L. Looks like that one's kind of all messed up. What else do we know? If we know that we want the end point to be there, I'm trying to think what we can dimension it relative to, because I want to put the end point on this guy over here and a certain, a certain distance away. So let's see what we can use to do that. Those are like a little electric connectors. I wish I had like a little reference point or something like that. Da, 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 da. Let me go ahead and put in, this is going to sound really weird, but another reference line. Just right along here. And let's see if we can get that, give that a length. Okay, we can even lock that length, I think, if we want. But what I'm trying to do is basically connect this to the end of that, whatever's going on there. Of course, it's a little hard to see right now. Well, there it is. Hmm. Oh, I'm just thinking aloud. I'm trying to think of how to go ahead and make that hinging thing work. Because I do know that that wants to be a special. It wants to be parallel. Actually, that we can make happen. To make it parallel, let's just go ahead and we'll take this and we'll dimension it relative to that. We'll give it the same angle. At least that'll get us at least you know part way there. So home, and we'll do an angular, and we'll say this versus that. Okay, and we know that should have at least the same fold. No, wait, that's not right. What's the difference? Oh, yeah, I think it's really got itself all messed up. Fold angle there is 71. I think when we broke it, we ended up sort of breaking it a little bit in there. Let me put the fold angle back in here again. And the fold angle here. Okay, now they're parallel. Not in the right place, but at least it's parallel. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and, you know, now that we're sort of reconstrained again, we'll try flexing that again. Let's say 0 foot 8 just for some uh, variety. Okay, looks like we're doing okay there. Zero foot six. Okay, at least we got parallel. <laughs> That's the first step. Now we got to get it anchored. Okay, we're parallel and we know it has the right length. Now we got to get it anchored. Okay, so let's think about how we can do that. Because what I want to do, How can I give it, usually like in a lot of environments, I can give it a point or something like that to hang on. And that's what I'm sort of messing with here. It's really, how can I get that to kind of hang on a point, short of putting another line in there? Because even here, and that's just moving up like that. That's not doing it for us. You can't just move it. I think you, know, well, you might be able to. That's okay. The question is if it's going to stay stuck or not. Let's try that. <laughs> yeah, 
and just keep on flexing the one variable that we care about. Hmm, maybe. I like things that just stick automatically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Score. Now we just need the same length of the ends connecting those two. Exactly. Although the interesting thing is the other part, it really just has to be, it's a bar that comes up. Because if we, as long as we keep the right angle, it'll sort of do the right thing. Okay. I think I think those two angles are coplanar. The this angle here? The right. bottom. Like if you were to, to make a new line there connecting those yep. two. And the one on the opposite side. Oh, exactly. No, they so are. The, you yeah. can just make those the same angle. I think or... Exactly. Let's do a save because I think you're on to like really exactly what we need to do here. So we'll say, okay, let's do a reference line. I'm going to come here and I'm just going to go off and it's going to be some length, whatever that is. We'll figure that out in a second. But if it's connected there, and I think it's connected there, the last thing is we just have to get the angle and I think you're right. It's just that angle over here, here to here is once again the fold angle. Is this making sense? It's kind of, it's, you know, we're kind of making it up as we go, but I think that we're actually pretty close to what we need. Okay, so let's try this. So again, let's say that's like uh, one foot zero. Check that out. Let's say zero foot six. Oops, that looks like it broke. Okay, what happened there? Let's go back to like uh, something. Let's undo that, and we'll come back and sort of see if we can figure out, you know, where it flexes and where it doesn't. Okay, it looked pretty good there. Let's go back down. Maybe your maybe your distance away from uh, the away from L is, is too long, so it kind of oh. goes inward. Yeah, you know, it's it's the things can be coming inside out because like yeah, at one foot four, it's there. At one foot five, watch what happens to that bar. Yeah, it's it's not like it's it's attached to the end, so but it's it, not the stand it exactly. You open it too, too far. Okay, exactly. And then if we come down here and we say zero, okay, so it's sort of half there, right? So if we say one foot zero, we're back over here. Okay, yeah. See, it's so we got to lock those two things together. Not to worry that I think we can probably lock. Let's go back and we say uh, annotate. Let's see if we can give that a set dimension. And even that. Let me just lock it for now, and then we'll like uh, go from there. Although, even though you're here, will it lock? Let's see if I can. Da -da 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 -da. I want that to lock. We'll see. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, da -da -da -da. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, in there. Mm. Oh god, this is going to be my pinch distance. Which makes no sense as a name, but hey, it'll work. Okay, and now let me try locking that thing. Okay, so... Now we'll try this again. Ooh, looking slick. Okay, and then finally, this thing over here, we need a length on that, which is how long the final uh, piece is. And that doesn't have to be L. Those other things had to be L or 2L or something like this. What do you want to call this guy here? Any preferences? What do you call it? It's the final fold out. It's whatever. It's it's the the yeah, arm extension. Whatever, it's yeah. I'll oh, just call it. Oh, this is gonna call our. It's our outer extension, or it's whatever it is. End, end point. <laughs> okay, and that again can be an instance parameter. And actually, could, yeah. Let's leave it as a type parameter. It does that doesn't need to change. You could make it change. Depends on how much flexibility you want in this part. Okay, so great, we have that. 
So whether we want that thing to be, uh, you know, two foot four and have a very fat umbrella or whatever it is. Okay. Beauty. I think we need one more. Tell me. What do you think? I think we need one more off the end extension to finish the umbrella. That the, just goes where That's the top draw, draw about about the top string. Down, the the top, top string that so brought it in and out. Oh, what is that thing down there? That's okay, that's the final arm and it's that oh that's, that's one more that kind of does, does it have another pinch point to do it or what does it do? Or is that the stone? No, it should have something on it, right? Yeah. I think it's attached to this point here. And then it, it pushes it outward that one lifts and it would need another the so this, this, um, it, in order to get it to force out, does it have another that's another a, pincher in it to make that's it a do it? That's a different model. That, that wasn't the model that Andre. Yeah, um, I think he gave us this one because every, uh, every time we need to force a pinch, we need to get one of those like crisscrossing scissor things. Yeah, his had a, a wire though on top that brought it all together. He pulled, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we could set the parameters for all this. Right. Well, the, yeah, anything we want to do is like you know if we, we want to add more pinching because really. You know, this is like it's just two levels out, but you can you can imagine there could be six levels of scissoring out there, and it's really so. What we learned is we can get the points to hang; they stay together. That was really nice. It was just we had to lock lock that pinch distance to make sure that you know where are the where's the constraint. If you hang it, it's staying on, on the line, but the pinching is the, really the part that made it you know do the scissor as opposed to sliding down the the rod. Okay. Either way, there. So that's good as a start. Let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and mix, uh, put some rods into this, sort of make this actually more like uh, this real elements. Yeah. So, so far, so good? OK. Let's go back over to uh, my 3D view. Yikes. Okay, that's a little better in terms of what it is. And again, it's sort of laying flat on its side over here. Okay, so here's the deal. You got a bunch of reference lines. Reference lines are great because you can sort of sweep or extrude geometry on them, whatever. They're just going to determine whatever your geometry is. So, like, what kind of rods? You want little round rods or little square rods? Or what do you have in mind for these things? Or some combination thereof? Or... Okay. Yeah, let's try that. That'll be the easiest thing. Okay, for the round rods... What we can do is let's go ahead and we can make every bar separate. We should probably do that because then it's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of a little, it's more accurate ultimately in terms of you'd have to manufacture them all as opposed to having individual sweeps. So here's how that's going to work. Under home, we get to choose extrusion, blend, or sweep. Sweep is a little more flexible. You could actually, since it's really following a straight path, you could just call it an extrusion. It's kind of whichever way you want to think about it. Okay. And we will go through, and if I do sweep, I'm going to say sweep always has two pieces. One is let's find the path, and I'm going to go ahead and just pick a path because it's already there. I could sketch it, but pickings might as well do that. Okay, and then along that path, there's just our uh, like a sketching plane. What I can do is let me say that I'm going to sketch, and I'll edit it. And I can go through here and kind of pull out and kind of make some sort of rod. Now for this one, oh, he's such a glutton for this stuff. Do that. Just doing is a temporary. Let me see if I can actually put the real dimension in there. It's radial. Okay, because if I can choose that dimension. I can again add a parameter to it, and I can say, oh, that's going to be the, uh, the rod diameter or the rod radius or something like that. That way we can have fat rods or skinny rods, depending upon, uh, like, you know, is it going to be a gigantic one or a small one? And I think that's actually one of the points Andre is trying to drive home is that it's really nice, the more we can sort of build this stuff parametrically so that the same thing, which is your hand umbrella, can become, can become a canopy that fits over an entire plaza. Mm -hmm. And you can use the same form and just drive it with the parameters, the better. You know, because it's the same basic idea of a scissor expanding off of a, a center rod. Okay, 
So let's say that is going to be uh, type, 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 type. Uh, yeah, put it that way. We'll go through and put in a value here. For example, oh, and for its rod radius, let's say it's only going to be uh, what is it, 0 0.25 or something like that. Make it pretty skinny for now. Okay, and then when we finish the sweep, that's finishing the sketch, and that finishes that. Okay, so now we have a round rod that's doing that thing. Beautiful. So we'll do the same thing for some of these other ones. We'll grab that guy. So it is a sweep. Uh, again, we'll pick the path. Close that up. We'll sketch it. And actually, if I have a round profile, I could do it that way too, because a lot of round profiles are they're pretty easy to come by. Oops. Again, we'll be good and annotate it. And we'll call that the rod radius. Close up the sketch, finish the sweep. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing to this thing over here. We're pretty close. Okay, not counting for all the joints and all the little hinge pieces that have to sort of be in here, but actually getting it pretty close. Okay, so again, sweep, pick the path, close it, sketch a profile, come back over here. Have to add the dimension to it. Pop. Just so that we can go through and associate the parameter with it. Oops, not add a parameter. Yeah. Just uh, choose one. Okay, back over here. Finish that. Finish that. And finally, our last little piece is over here. Okay, and we'll do the same thing here. Home sweep. Pick a path. Uh, close that. Profile, sketch it, edit it. Okay, then for that, again, we'll add the dimension to it and associate it with that rod diameter, rod radius. Over there. What am I doing? The wrong thing. Okay, so, so far so good. We have that kind of little piece of armature in terms of what's going on. Okay, that's actually not too bad in terms of what we want. Let's go ahead and save that away. We should breathe a sigh of relief and say at least we have one piece of this working. The next thing we do, we actually think about how can we kind of pull a bunch of these together around a pole or something like that and make the, the umbrella out of this whole thing. So you ready to take that one on? Do you have a choice? Okay, let's go ahead and like, uh, let's just flex this one more time, make sure it's also doing it when it wants to. So and again, I should put it, come up with better names here in terms of what's going on. But so if it's one foot, if it's one foot six, okay. And actually, when you get really good with these things, there's all sorts of things you should put in here. That uh, oh, for example, you know, R has to be less than two times L minus some little gap because there's going to be there's there's points in the geometry that you know, don't make sense anymore. And if you want to keep users from doing that, it should always be you know that it is. It's if R is less than such and such, do this. But if R gets to be some value greater than that, instead substitute in a, you know, the maximum value that's allowable, just to kind of allow that you know there's there's endpoints. And that's how you sort of do that formulaically.
So let's well, even think about that. So even in here. Now I know how we take math. Was it? Now I know how we take math. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's to do all this stuff. So in here, it'd be like even on the fold angle. It's this whole thing. You know, it's really yeah. If you know. If R is less than two times L, then go ahead and use R. Otherwise, go ahead and use two times L. Does that make sense? Because, yeah, you don't want to exceed it yeah. no matter. If they say they want their R to be four feet and you don't have that length, then you, you, don't, you don't have it. Okay, let's go ahead and say okay to that. And let's go ahead and use it for something else. Okay, so save this away. I think I just did that. Let's go ahead and see if we can apply this somewhere else. Okay, and this is the part that I always kind of... I have to think about this in terms of making this happen. Um, th prop, uh, pieces like this actually have sort of a property too. They have some family properties. And it's, one of them is this whole notion is it, is it always vertical? And the other is, is it work plane based? And those are two things we have to sort of work with a little bit. Always vertical means that, like, it's going to, since we drew it flat on the floor, it's always going to be flat on the floor. It's going to constrain it that way. And we're going to actually want to turn that off because we're going to be able to rotate it up. The other thing I'm going to say is work plane base. That I'm actually going to turn on. That is going to be that when we're placing it, if I put a work plane, a vertical work plane, then I can slap it onto the side of it. Okay. And again, that's just generally a better choice, I think, for what we need to do here. So again, save those away. So let's open a project now because we're going to, you know, or actually we can do this as a project. We could actually do it in another part. If you want to have parts inside of parts inside of parts. It kind of depends on... That's if you were to like add the hinges and stuff and then you would bring them together? Or... Yeah, it's, it's like you, yeah, you could build the arms individually, then you could sort of, you know, within that, we could sort of put them all around a pole and make that part of a family and then we could bring that family into a, you know, you can nest. And it depends on just how many layers of nesting you want for all your assemblies and components and subcomponents and sub-subcomponents, stuff like that. For now, uh, well, no, let's go ahead and do it. Let's do the smart thing. Let's put it into a family because I think they actually, I still think of this thing as being a family. We might want to put a bunch of these umbrellas all over the project or something like that. So let's see if we can get that to work. I was going to say let's do something quick and dirty, but let's be good about this. Since we're recording for uh, next year to watch, we'll see how this works. So I got a generic model again. You can think of it like a, as though we're inside a project. And what I want to do is I'm going to give myself, again, I'm looking down from the top right now. I'm going to give myself a nice reference plane to put this on right now. Okay, and I'll rotate up into 3D. And, oh, even back over here, I should basically say show the work plane. Uh, when I was back over there, I probably should have given it a nice name so I could actually sort of find it. So, uh, call this arm placement. Just something to work with. Okay, now I'll go back and I'll go to back to the 3D view again. And I'll switch this over so as opposed to being down on the floor in the default thing, I'll switch it over so it's uh, the arm placement plane. Okay, so we're up there instead. Okay, even in here, actually the one thing I can't see here is, uh, well, I'll place it here, then we'll move it into around the center line. Um, we want to go through and do an insert, because what we want to actually do is now load in our arm. So, we'll go out to wherever I left that thing. Um, probably in my documents. Did I call it angle bracket? No, angle bracket was yesterday. What did I call this thing? Dimensional umbrella. That's dimensional lumber. Well, let's do this. We'll go looking back where I, uh, umbrella fin. Where did I put my umbrella fin? Okay, let's go back over here. Close family. Back over here, uh, documents. There it is. Okay, always choose the one that doesn't have the dot zero 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 and some number. The dot zero zero zeros are their backups. So that's like the one that we did ten minutes ago and fifteen minutes ago and all the previous copies. So grab the latest one. Okay. Since it is work plane based, I should have the option now, which should be showing up over here somewhere, 
umbrella pin. There it is. If I choose this and try, start trying to drag it in there, there's this whole notion, do I put it on a face or do I put it on a work plane? A face would be if you have like a piece of existing geometry, like a block or some something that you can stick it to that would be putting it on the face. The work plane will be, let me go ahead and put it on this thing. Okay, so here it's going to put it on the vertical plane because I have a vertical one. If it was the reference plane, it would be just down flat. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in here just so we have a copy of it over there. Looking not too bad. Let's go back over to reference level, see if we can find it. There it is way over there. I think that's our piece. Let me go through and do a move on it. I'm just going to move it over to, so its endpoint is right around the center there. Okay, and now we're going to add a little uh, stuff to this. Actually, let's do this. Yeah, we don't have our center pole yet. Let's kind of pull that off a little bit. Now let's put a center pole into this thing. Oh, that could probably just be an extrusion. Just right around the center. Okay, again, we can make that parametric, whatever we need to do. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's be really good about this. So we'll say annotate radial. <coughs> Okay, and that is now going to be, add an add a parameter to it. Okay, uh, center pole radius. Oh, that'd be there. Okay, we'll finish that up. We can give it a height. Again, that could be parametric or not. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take this guy over here. Even here, it would be good to add a parameter there so that it's always it follows the center pole radius. So if I add that and change that to also be center pole radius, it, that way it'll it'll hug up against it. It's really tricky as you try to make things parametric to kind of keep everything hanging together. Just add a lot of different little constraints to make it all happen. Okay, so far so good. Let's go out to 3D. It's kind of ugly looking. <laughs> But you'll get the idea. Okay, now we want to go ahead and somehow rotate that thing around. Okay, so this is the radial array, all like what we did uh, with the teeth of the gear a little while ago. So we'll grab that guy. We say radial array it, array it. We have to choose radial because that's not the default. We'll move the center of the array to be the center of that. And we'll say swing it. And we'll swing to the second instance, whatever that is. Okay. And oh, let's, we'll make a bunch of them. We'll make them co op. For, uh, that's fine for now. And then we'll say that there are going to be, oh, what does that make? There can be eight of them. Now that didn't do the right thing. <laughs> let's think about why that didn't do the right thing. Let's come back over here, and I wonder if it has to do with the work planes. Hmm, we'll think about that in a second. Okay, come back, let's try that again, and then we'll decide to uh, figure out what it is here. There, 45. That should be okay. Center of rotation, that's okay. Three, yeah, let's see. Are you snapping to something on 3D here? Do you have 3D snap on? It shouldn't be much of an effect. Let me see what's actually doing there. I wonder if it's because it's work plane based. I wonder if it's, it's something like that. Because it's got that. Honestly, I'm not sure what's driving that behavior. I think, well, because they're saying so though, so parallel, I think it's got to be that it's the sole issue that it's work plane based in terms of what's going on. Can you delete the work plane? And you try to rotate it like that. Okay, just actually physically rotate it. Let's actually let's just like uh, array it. Yeah. On a X Y plane. Oh, you think it's because we're actually? Uh, you may be right. Let's go and check this out. It's interesting how okay, you know, so, sometimes I hear, but I don't actually really hear. Okay, you may actually be right. Let's see what's going on here. So if we say, well, that's the reference level. Okay, it is down there. 
I guess a good thing to do is just try it. Let's just try even rotating it before we try arraying it or something like that. Because that's going to be the first part. So can you even rotate it? No, see, it's still not liking that. And it has something to do with the fact that we placed it in the tab and the yada 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 and all that type stuff. Can it be just once that you're bringing it? Oh, now that would be okay. Although what it kind of gets into is I wonder if back over in, in the other land, if we could just rotate it over there and then bring it in this way. Yeah, it's certainly, you're under a good, you know, good suspicions into our good uh, you know, hunches about how we might need to do this. Let's try that. Let's just go over to that other one and see if that has any sort of promise to it. And worst case, to what comes to worst, we're just going to bring it in four times and yeah, and put them in. But you know, like everything, we we, we always try the, uh, the the exceptionally hard but sort of intellectually satisfying way first, and then we uh, finally give up and do what's necessary. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's even in here. Let's grab all that stuff and say that I want to get, that's all that stuff. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's get the whole thing. And I don't think I'll be able to rotate it just yet because I'm out of plane, but let me go ahead and set my plane. Whether it's front right or left back, I think it's center left right. Okay. You rotate. Okay. Got the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Not the other. Yeah. So what would I say? We could go back and redraw the whole thing vertically, which somehow is inherently not very satisfying in terms of doing the whole thing again. What else can we do here? It's almost like that. that, 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 that. I'm wondering though. Oh, I got an idea. You know, we're full of ideas. Yes. Um, let me try putting it as a part inside of a part inside of a part, which sounds kind of really weird, but we'll see if that'll work. Okay. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Okay. Let's see if that'll work. Okay, so let's go back over to the land of the uh, family too. Okay, so here it is. It's hanging around. It's just waiting to be rotated or something like that. So even I'll take out this thing over here. I'll take that over there because I really just want to have this. Yeah, it is doing sort of the right thing in terms of where it wants to be. It's vertical. It's doing whatever it's supposed to be happening up there. Okay, so let me go and do that. Um, okay, so let me move that. And let's move it back into the origin just so we can place it nicely. So in 3D, that's kind of doing about what we want. Okay, let me save this as. This is going to be the umbrella fin rotated. And then in terms of what we want to do here, I think that for parameters here, you know, think in a minute about how we can go ahead and set this up so that we can pass the parameter up, because we want to be able to pass the parameter up and still be able to change it as part of an overall assembly. Because as a part right there, there it is. Oh, I see where it is right there. Okay, see where we have the R right over here? Even though that sort of parameter lives in the family underneath us, if I want to expose that parameter and make it available to the new family that I created as a parameter, I basically go through and add a parameter here, and those two things will be equal to each other. So this is going to be, again, the... You can call it the R. Let's see if it'll actually do that, or if it'll like uh, let me not do that. Okay, so it's always going to be really, that sounds real that R is equal to R, but now even for this thing, I'll get rid of the center pole radius because we we're not going to use it right here. Okay, we should be able to put in one right there. And basically we're, we're passing it through. 
Okay, and every level of indirection, we have to kind of keep on passing the variables through that you want to expose. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so with this thing now, and boy, this sounds like uh, it's gotten complicated. This umbrella fin kind of rotated up or something like that. Let's create a new family. But nesting's a good sort of uh, thing to learn. And again, this is going to be a generic model. Uh, okay. And we'll go out and grab our thing that's rotated up. And we'll load it into the new one. Okay. Because I think that what's going to happen now is since it's now just a part that's embedded within here, let me see if this will work. Make a liar out of me. It always does. Yep, we can do that. Okay, so sometimes you have to sort of put levels of indirection. The, the more you sort of encapsulate, it's kind of interesting. It sort of, it wraps you in a little bit of a pr protective shrink wrap that hides you from some of the things that determine the geometry and gives you the ability to kind of control them. And so, yeah, this is a weird example for doing it, but it's sort of, uh, I think it's going to work. So from this example now, okay, so here we have that. We can array this thing around here. Do the 45. Okay, so that we want five of them or eight of them or whatever it is. Okay, and we start to get that. And phew, you knew there was going to be some way to do that. Okay, to start getting... Uh, whatever it is. Okay, now we still need to go ahead and put the center pole in and stuff like that, but we got the basic idea of what's going on. Okay, is that sort of making sense? Okay, let's try one other thing to do to this though, in terms of that, and that it, okay, because I'm a glutton for kind of continuing to try and like uh, beat this thing. So this is, oh, and even in terms of that, let's uh, finish the array. And again, you can make this parameter or whatever it is, or if you don't want a half array, or all these things are sort of adjustable. Let's say that you want to put uh, eight of them in there all together, okay, to kind of complete your umbrella. Okay, and I'm going to call this the uh, umbrella fins rotated or arrayed or whatever it is. Okay, with this, and we can add it here, or we can add it in a part that in turn you know, has this, and there's sort of a principle of assemblies and components and subcomponents and doing all that type of stuff. Let's go back out to 3D and see if we can make some sense of this. I want to think about how we can sort of do the skin. And if we're doing the skin, I'm not going to do the skin as complicated as your skin, which has all the origami to it. Let's just see if we can even sort of stretch a kind of a, like an elastic skin or some nylon skin across this thing, just like you would have in a normal umbrella. That's sort of a, a starting point anyway. And how you might do something like that is, and let's see if we can make this happen. What I really want to do is actually, let's see if I can do this. Can I do 3D snapping? I can't. I wanted to do 3D snapping so I could actually just try and actually grab those points. Maybe you can look at it from the top view. Hmm. Ooh, I can get those. Let's check it out. I can get those. I'm wondering if part of it, though, is that since they're all grouped together, whether I can get to them. That's ex exactly what I want to do. The, the groovy thing is, though, because I have reference points available, like in conceptual masses, I don't know how I get those in here. Exactly, yeah. You want to put points in, don't you? Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's like, I'm like, hmm. I'm just thinking about whether I can do that here or not. That's where I actually, I think, um, when I first started with it, yes? I had problems with which, which one do you really choose to start working on? Yeah. As far as the family. No, I understand. Let me try something. Yeah, you know, this and you know, really, what we're doing now is it's probably the most complicated. Yeah, this is this is very complicated stuff. Most people who are using Revit don't get this deep into it. Let me try this and sort of see if I can do anything here. Because I think we're close. But I just can't grab on there. But it's interesting, I can do this. I can do snapping like that. So let me try this. Let me undo. I did this ungroup thing, and I don't want to do that. I'll put them all back in there, grouped. 
What if you like netted a surface on the outside pieces and on the inside, <clears throat> like arm? Exactly. I'm trying to think of a way to do. I'm trying to way to Did grab you could that. Select the entire rod. Hmm. Let's think about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to get those four different points and just sort of do a mass within there or something like that. And this is one of those weird things where maybe I can't do that here. I might have to do this within the family in terms of what's going on. Are they, are they grouped together? Um, you can outline them with different lines. <coughs> oh, yeah, and no, I think, okay, you're on to something here. Let's do this. Now, they are grouped together now, but okay, let's, okay, let's finish this and I'll take it into a project because I think that may be one of the things that I can do in the project that I can't do in a family. It's, it's always weird about what you can and can't do. Okay, let's bring that around. Okay, so we have this thing. Okay, because what I'm thinking about is trying to do something with conceptual masses. That way I can get the points and all that type of stuff. But I'm having trouble doing it here, so let me do this. Let me go create a new family or a new project now. Okay. And we'll get that umbrella thin thing uh, all arrayed. And I'm going to load that into now the project. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So here we all are, and that's looking pretty good in terms of what's going on. The oops, and even there, let me pass the parameter. I didn't do a jo good job of passing the parameter. So even here, in terms of all that type stuff, that was the one piece. Let me edit the group. Here it is. I need to pass that in. Again, <laughs> I have to kind of keep passing R up the chain if I want to be able to use it. Okay, and save that away. And then we'll load that into the project again. So even here now, there should be a property. Is it R there? Oh, I don't think I made an instance parameter. What did I do? It's a type parameter now, but let's see if it'll work. Yep. Not too bad. Andre should be happy with how far we've gotten. <laughs> okay, so let's say, I, I think for this thing, this what I may need to do is do this thing where it's a mass. And I think that may help us here, because mass is where we start to get be able, the ability to kind of do all sorts of arbitrary things. And this is the thing, ah, now I can do it. Ah, you, you know points, this is good. Okay, so I can put a point here, I can put a point here, point there, point there, or, I can just do it as reference lines. Either way would work. Can I? Maybe not. Model lines? Let's try this. I want to be. Where's my 3D? No, oh, 3D snapping's right there. There it is, finally. Yeah, I don't think I needed to put the points because it was enough just to snap them. Okay. So, given that thing, now I can go ahead and take those things and say, let's make a solid form out of it. Okay, and just make a surface if I just want a skin. Okay, and do that. Do the same thing over here. I'll make our, again, it's kind on, of. On projects, would you be able to uh, like array that radio here? What I think maybe you may be able to, it might be safer to kind of actually think of actually stretch. I don't know. I'm going to think about whether it's better to stretch it or not. But, you know, I think you probably could. Let's try it. Let's see what's going on. So I got that one. Let me go ahead and make a skin out of that thing too. Oh, that's interesting. I only got I only got three. Well, that's not good. Okay. Let's see how we're doing. Let's go now for these things. In terms of those, we can give them properties. We can make them. We can do all sorts of things to those. But let's go ahead and say uh, finish that. That's okay. Orbit that around. Not too bad. 
So now, although it's still an inst uh, type parameter as opposed to an instance parameter, and we can change that, let's go ahead and say that's going to be one foot as opposed to that. Beautiful. And the skin's going to stretch according to all those sort of things in there. So good. The question now is, like, could you array those things around too? And oh, masses just aren't showing now. I, I should change those masses into being something legitimate. And to change those things into something legitimate, let me start with that. Uh, here they are. Let's go ahead and say that one of these things is going to be, oh, we can call it a wall or a roof, whatever it is you want to call it. I'll call it a roof. OK, uh, I'll duplicate this and call it my uh, umbrella skin. You can have different panels of different types, whatever it is. And that skin is only like, oh, an inch thick or whatever it is. Yeah. And it's made of oh, some sort of nice translucent material. Okay. But now I can basically say, make you into a roof. Okay, and now it's a real element in there. Okay, so now, back over here. Am I looking up or am I looking down? I'll do it in 3D. <laughs> I, I always have the issue, am I looking over my head or am I looking under? And i got to think about where this is. Because that should show up. Can you select a, a go to plan again? Just select that one. Let's see which one's which. Okay, that's the mass. Let me just hide the mass. Okay, so that's the actual element. Somewhere is it? It's just somewhere down at the bottom. But let's try arraying this now. I should actually put something in there to be the center point. Okay, I need to put my pole back or something like that. I'll just do something temporary. So for everyone watching the video, don't do it this way. There's better ways to do it. <laughs> but we're uh, getting slow and punchy now. Okay, so now we can say that, and we can array that around that. eight of them or whatever it is. Beautiful. So I think the nice thing is about this whole thing, yeah, in the end, yeah, we, we're not doing a good job with your origami yet. We're going to have to do some other kind of groovy math to sort of figure out how those folds work between the different ribs. But we're getting close in terms of what's going on here. So again, change it. Just make sure it's all flexing good. And again, I should make this an instance parameter as opposed to a type parameter. But I can do that back over in the other dialog and re-import it. We'll say that's going to be uh, like 0 foot 6, kind of relatively flat. Oh, actually, interesting. Notice that it didn't change. OK. No. Oh, you know what it is? This is interesting. The mass is changing, but the face is not updating. Is there not? Exactly. So what, let me show you what, what's going on. This is a, this is one of the funny things about masses. I thought that was such a clever strategy for doing it. The mass changed, okay, but the face didn't sort of move with it. What you have to do is this is going to sound really weird. And we'll think about a way we can do this more programmatically. Is you say, oh, is that the one? Can I do it because it's arrayed? I want to do this thing where it says update to face. But it's not letting me do it. And is it because it's an arrayed element? i got to think about why it's not letting me do that. It looks like it's something that's a group member. Let me take it out of the group. <laughs> that got rid of it completely. Let me try these and just sort of, I'm just trying to see if we can figure out a, a pattern to this. Uh, filter, oh, groups, there they are. I'm going to try ungrouping them, and we'll think about a better strategy for doing this. The problem is, as a grouped element, I'm not sure if it'll update. Edit face. Update to face. There it is. Okay, that's the origin of it. That's the one that really is determined. So I can say update that one. So we've got to think about the right order of operations, that if we use masses, whether or not to go ahead and just sort of have now that. Now it feels like it's 
you would array it, you would conform to the base of the umbrella? Or? Yes, if I, yes. But it's really, the key is that updating to the face doesn't happen automatically there. So you would technically have to draw them in and then update all of them to the, the, the face? Yeah, I don't like doing it that way. Let's try one other sort of, let's try another strategy. You got a couple more minutes? Let's try you know, one other strategy I think may be a little bit better for you. Okay, so back over here. This is, uh, that's our roofs. I'm going to back up to the point where we just have that. Uh, there's the mass. Let's try editing that in place. Okay, the deal is the mass and sort of changing it into a roof, that's where we're sort of losing it because that thing doesn't update automatically as the array updates in terms of what's going on. Let me try one other thing. This thing over here is a surface. Let me try dividing the surface. This is going to sound really weird into all those little grids. Okay. In fact, if it was a curving surface, that'd be a good thing to do because we can sort of start conforming to whatever is in there. Let me say that we only want to have one grid by one grid. Okay. So as far as it's concerned, that's actually a rectangular grid, even though, well, it's four points. It's like a rectangular piece. Does that sort of make sense? Am I losing you? Okay. So let's go on down and we'll say, great, it's going to have a rectangular pattern. Okay, so this is, yeah, I saw you playing around with this the other day with the uh, co the, the components. Yeah, because yeah. even then, we, we can make our origami happen out of the components, then they could apply that to these points and sort of fold within there. But let's think about this. Okay, so you got that thing. We need to go then and say, now we're going to load a family, and it's called a curtain panel base pattern. They can be simple flat things like a rectangular surface or something that has a little more detail to it. Like that funny, you know, I showed something with a little hook in it the other day. Um, I can then choose that and say, go ahead and apply that rectangular surface solid to it. That's kind of weird. Looks like it has a tab off the end. Is it doing over there? <laughs> that is particularly weird looking. I don't know what that is. I'll think about how to define that in just a second. We'll finish the mass. But the nice thing is now, if I hide the mass, let's go back to uh, that. Okay, and it's just that thing. That thing now, although it has these weird tabs about it, we'll sort of figure out what those are coming from in just a second. I think that thing will actually go through and kind of keep on moving relative to the umbrella folds. So if I say one put six in here and apply, yep, yeah, that's going to keep on doing the right thing in terms of what's going on. So that's probably a better way to make it a curtain panel on the mass since we're using the mass to generate that. Oh, no worries. I'm, I'm with you sometimes. Okay, that's good there. So now that thing over there Oh, I lost my little uh, groovy uh, model lines. Model line here. So let's try arraying that thing now. Again, allowing the fact that I have bad tabs. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with you? You want to array? Darn you. That's kind of interesting because it won't let me clone that. Interesting. Okay. We might have to go through and uh, yeah, do everyone. Yeah, there's something about the fact since it's determined by that face of the mass and the mass. Yeah, I think it's it's very local to what we did there. So the thing to do would be then to go back over to the umbrella, put the you know 16 different points on it that sort of really define like all eight of the panels or something like that, and do it all over there. I did them as reference lines. Um, say again, it did not what? We created reference lines yes. along the outline of that thing, yes. and it still did not follow the... Oh, the reference lines follow. Where, where we got in so trouble, the thing that didn't follow is, 
when we put the, the mass surface, okay, and so we do the, the reference lines and we make a mass surface. Yeah. Okay. So do we have to have those reference lines refer to the reference lines of the outline? Oh, the reference lines are good. They'll always kind of keep on going there. Where we get in trouble is, it's when we take that plane, that surface, and we try to convert it into a solid surface. That's where it got confused because it said that, oh, you know, although I could make it into the skin of a roof, that wouldn't update automatically. Yeah. It would be that thing. If I did them all independently and then chose them and chose to update them all, they would, but I'm trying to get something that'll go more automatically. So I do think this whole idea of the the panels on the mass surface is better as a way to do it. But we're still just losing a ring. Maybe that's you know kind of the high level about this is that in terms of all this sort of component componentization, arraying some seems to be one of the harder things. Or even in terms of this, I'm trying to think what else we could do. Yeah, we might want to try to. You know, no, no, I'm trying to think. That. It's. I think we're losing the arraying. Yeah, it's. It's if we put that skin in before we did the array. Yeah, because we did that even to get it to array and do it the rotate, we had to sort of like take it and nest it into something else. I think if we put the skin in lower down the chain, yeah, that might actually be, yeah, give us more flexibility in terms of doing the array. Although then, you know, mathematically it'd be harder to compute how far it has to go out and do it. So I got to think about that piece of the strategy. Okay, but hopefully that's enough to get you going. Okay. Does anyone want uh, this whole set of files so you can kind of carry them away somewhere? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll stop the recording, and if anyone has a thumb drive or a hard drive, let me give you that whole set to work with, and we'll get it all kind of figured out. Okay, let me stop this thing.